Something came from bottom of bottom of bottom. Something came from bottom of bottom of bottom. Welcome to Something Came From Baltimore. I am your host, Tom Galker. And tonight on the phone is the legendary smooth jazz saxophonist, Walter Beasley. I interviewed Walter Beasley back in 2016 for Jazz 101. We went back through his last century, 2000 into 2016. And we played one song off each album and talked about it. It was a big deal. But we stopped at Blackstream, which was the 2016 recording. And we finished off with a big hit from the album, Don't Say a Word. In this interview, we are going to review Walter Beasley's output for 2020. And what you're going to hear is EDM, soundscapes, chill, and smooth jazz. Walter Beasley has stretched his musical palette in 2020. And we are going to buckle in and go on that thrill ride. Walter Beasley, welcome to Something Came From Baltimore. Uh, If you remember, uh, I was at WEAA uh, FM. And we did... uh, like kind of a the the beginning of the century 2000 to 2016 we played one song off of each album which was pretty epic it was a wow. it was a big thing we had a lot of conversations and we i thought well let's just do the best of your output for this year and i, I have wow. some songs here and you're all over okay. the place in your style so it's gonna be a lot of fun the reason i was real hot for you to i wanted to talk to you is that um, I still, you know, watch you on Facebook and and catch you sometimes, and you are real down and out around November fifteenth, uh, talking about this is the first time that your your father's not going to be around, and and it was rough for you. Yeah. Then I was like, you uh, left an impression on me, and then I, I was like, I'm I'm going to contact him. So, yeah. other than, you know, all the stuff that's going on with COVID, and how how is that for you this year? Man, look, um, it, I thought it was John Kennedy who said that life begins when you lose both your parents or something like that. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. But it's no joke. Uh, I mean, I, I'm very blessed to have had both of them for so very long. Uh, but to lose them both within a year and a half of each other was just a very, very hard blow. At this point, though, I'm still, you know, it's, it's a lot better because, you know, um, I've learned to, I've learned, I've come to the realization that life does go on and whatever's going to happen in my life, I have to make it happen. And I, you know, I can't let it, it's just so easy to sit and just become depressed and just, you know, drink or smoke or whatever, just, you know, just, just get rid of the pain to the pain. Or you can try to be as productive as possible, accept the responsibility for your life and the blessings that God is giving you and go on and do what you need to do to make, to be as productive as you can. And each morning when I get up, that's my promise to myself, look, you know, this is the day that God has created for you. So it's time for you to get the heck up and do and make the best of it. So it, some days are better than others, but every day is a great day, and I'm very grateful to my parents for allowing me to, you know, have the solid foundation to be able to express myself in many different various forms. And, and uh, I, it's that's that's been the most um, interesting thing. Putting him in hospice in my home is something that it was. I mean, I knew I had to do it for him. But man, you know, you're talking about uh, watching your father take his last breath. It's it, uh, it, it's very humbling, and uh, it, it's not for everybody. But I but I owe him that. And that's what I did, and you know, so the house is much different now because he's not in it, and his room is still there. So it's it's all an adjustment. But I'm very very grateful to be able to to try to make the best of my life. I had a friend who died of brain cancer. He got stage four uh-huh. when he was diagnosed. So we went through the whole in-house hospice experience. It's something yeah. that I don't know. Like if you haven't been through it, you don't know what's yep. going to happen. And yep. you, when they show you, you've seen so many movies and TVs, they skip this part <laughs> of, yes. of the day-to-day yes. grind. It's always like a montage. Yes. And you're like, wait a minute, yes. this is the yes. real life stuff. Like what happens yes. next? It's it's, right. it's a really rough time, and it's not it's it stays with you all day. Like uh, you know, yes. he's, he's sitting in the living yes. room all day because he can't he can't go anywhere yes. else. So no, no. It, it's rough. Um, yeah, it really, really is. Um, and it's not fair. I, I was doing as much research as I could before I actually did it. Maybe about two or three days, just nonstop. 
And it actually says to the sister, look, you need to know if you're capable of doing it because this is not what you think it's going to be. <laughs> and I remember saying, no, I got to do it for him no matter what. I didn't, I didn't, didn't hesitate, but it, but the research, but the, but that was true. You know, you, you come out of it on the, come out the other side of a very different person. Yeah. I think and, you know, it'd be nice in an adult setting or even in high school where ugly. they explain to you, like, this is a mm-hmm. cycle of life and this is, mm-hmm. this is more than likely what's going to happen. I, I just saw a picture of Nile Rogers with his mom. She just passed away in the hospital. He just took a picture. And I just wrote back that, you know, it was wonderful that you were able to be with her at her last breath, even though it right. hurt your soul and it, and it, right. it feels bad. But you were able That's to right. do that special experience with, with that person. That Okay, so I, I, I check you out all the time. So I, I heard that. I, the net, I thought about you that day, and I came up with an idea. And it looks like you're already on top of it. So my idea was that you're such a you're, – you're very patient. You're a teacher, and, you're, and you are more or less an educator and, and kind. I'm like, you could easily do, like, podcasts or – motivational things that help people uh, grow old. Yeah. The navigation piece, you said something about how it was such a money grab to watch the healthcare industry while you're working yeah. with your dad. Like the the chaos that's involved about mm-hmm. billing and you mm-hmm. have to do this and that and the high cost of things that pop up and you don't know mm-hmm. what you need to pay. It's done on purpose to confuse people, especially in the time of their need, when they're older or when they're, yeah, when you're in a stress situation, all of a sudden bills are flying through and it's so confusing. And I'm like, this is where right. Walter needs to step in. And and I had no idea that you were so involved. You're like extremely hands-on with a new new job. Yes. Yes. I have a, I have a company called One to One Private Home Healthcare. And my goal is to try to the best of my ability to offer each of our clients the same, uh, the same kind of quality care that I gave my father. So that's my goal. And if we get, you know, if we start getting too busy or, or get too many clients, that's when I stop. And I just okay, look, we have what we need to do the best job we can. It's not about the need of it's about the comfort and the care of those we serve. But my, my first goal is to the clients of this company in the sense that if there's a, a major problem with them, and I, because it is my company, we're a small, and, and my chief CNA is only 26 years old, and she hasn't been through this side of it before. I have. I have to make myself available. To the, to the, I mean, because as you know, I mean, it is for people who have to make who have to make decisions or things things change on the on the dime or, or really quickly when you're in your age and you have to mentor. So, I mean, each day is different, no matter what, musically and otherwise. If there's a problem or a challenge that uh, is that's going on. With someone who's in their 80s and, and my company's responsible for them, I have to make myself available. And that's the newest thing. <laughs> that's the, yeah. The newest, re- my newest reality. And I'm like, wow. And it, it's a real blessing to be able to do it. But unfortunately, the uh, you know, my music colleagues will have to kind of take a back seat to, you know, what's going on in my life now. Are you having problems with, like, uh, hiring staff and COVID issues? And I, I started the company again with my father. Unfortunately, my father got really sick really quickly in Paris. Right in the midst of both. So we had no clients to get to start from, from the beginning. But my goal, all, and, but I do this as, and I say, I, I don't know if it's how to say this, kind of a blessing in the sense that if the, the, the slate was clean, I could start the business the way I wanted to start the business. And I wanted to make sure that we were doing, you know, like in music, my, my, my mentor once told me that, you know, well, you know, even if there's only a couple of, of, of people in the audience, you do 150%. Those two people will tell two people, those two people will tell two and you'll have more, uh, more of a fan base and you'll be able to, 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 to deal with. And that's how I come out of with the private home health care, is that, you know, if I concentrate on one or two clients right now, you know, or before, and I do the best I can, and I make them, their lives better, then they'll tell two people to be so I'm not really interested in something bigger. I just want to be better. And I want the company to do what it's supposed to do, and, and the rest will take care of itself. So, I, I was able to, to save some, save a little bit of money, uh, you know, in the music game, you know, Boston and all the drawing stuff like that. So I committed resources and I committed time to do this, knowing full well that it would probably be about a year to make some grief before there'd be some significant turnaround and I'd be able to say, okay, so, you know, we're okay financially, we'll be okay financially. And I think we will be, I know we will be, 
But I know it's going to get so right first of the whole thing because I'm a new player in a very small town. Yeah. And it's very conservative. Arizona is probably one of the most conservative places I've ever been in, in my life. Um, and especially this town, it's, you know, it, it, so it, it changed. They don't, they see me as saying. So I have to really earn their respect and, and let them know that this is, I don't care who you voted for. I don't care what the political plan is. My, my goal is to make your, your loved one's life as, as positive as possible, uh, in whatever way I can. And the rest of it, it's up, it, it's, it's support now. It's not even on my radar. So we're going to do an album review where uh, I'm going to dust off seven songs, I guess. All variety in, uh, next year will probably be as less songs because you're so busy with what you're doing. But before we get yes. into that, when I talked to you in 2016, you just had a heart attack or a stroke. No, no, heart no, attack, no, no, right? no, 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 no,
<laughs> and it, it sounds like you have like a voice sample on it. Yeah, that was my that's my writing partner. Actually, he wrote that whole thing I think by himself. That was we do these together, and um, he's he's a bit younger, so he's in the hip hop culture, and I'm you know obviously I'm older, so you know we combine our our, our production uh, uh, heads and, and we come up with grooves, but at the same time, you know I kind of mellow them out for people who are my age and older who get or you know my age who can get you know who can find some joy in them. So that one was his uh, composition. Actually, now what? And uh, and I play. It's the first time I played keyboard on that. I played the I played the keyboard solo on that song. That's that's one of my favorite pieces. And the thing about the, the whole thing about music to drive that now is that at this stage of my career and what I'm seeing in music industry, and I don't mean to sound this way, but everybody's playing saxophone. You know, um, you go on Facebook, you go on this one there. Everybody's trying to play. So everybody's so much porn, so much saxophone. That I just kind of got tired of it. And I told my DJ the best, and I got tired of hearing my own saxophone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I just wanted to create something that the listener could just lose themselves in and not be guided by a horn. You know, I'm obviously the next album will be some people with saxophone, and I have another one coming for some of these that I buy too. But I want people to be able to, to stimulate their own imagination and just see who to drive by as a guide or as a, as a, as a bed. And let them take them, you know, let challenge themselves to do whatever they want to do, however they want to do, and be the leader of their own, like their own imagination. Okay. The limitless is it's from a your. Oh. Now yeah. I don't I don't know you have a full EP that could have mm-hmm. easily went in with your uh, music to drive by. You couldn't intersperse those. They were they were cool songs. You know They're, what? I didn't think about that. Yeah, because you released that maybe a, a week or two before. Yeah. Uh, music the, yeah. to drive by. It would have worked because of what's going on now. Limitless is my favorite song off that album. In my opinion, yeah. it, it's it's a total watercolor song. Uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. they they would use that in watercolors, and I love the dissonance. Of, it sounds like noodling of a guitar right around th- yeah. three three thirty, and in my mind, I feel it's like you're you're on a a boat in the ocean, and yeah, and, yeah. and the the noodling piece feels like it's it's uh rods or whatever hitting the side of the boat for whatever reason just wow. making, yeah so yeah i get to dream on this song but i always wait for that noodle like that noodling part <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The whole piece, that whole piece, limitless, is, is designed just for what I, you know, it's a motivation, it's a, a meditation piece. And there, there are times when that, that piece comes in there that gives a little bit of rhythm, gives a little bit of, 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 of movement. I bring them in once in a while when it comes back from book, just, just, just so people don't get as comfortable in how to play it. Don't fall asleep. Yeah. You know, so it, it, it adds a little bit, not agitation, that's too strong a word for it. But just enough to say, hey, you with me? Yeah. <laughs> now, House of Sax, you worked with Phil Davis and he worked oh. with you on I'm Back. 
He's a producer, yes. keyboard uh, player. He yes. worked with Herbie, yes. George Duke, and Boney James. Yes. How cool is that? This is from your Going Home album, and it has a really Latin 70s funk to it. I think that this is kind of something you need to do, too, because in my opinion, this is a this is a total dance groove. Like, I bet you the beats per minute yep. is really high. And that, you know, like I say, my goal is to, um, I think about to that excellent single of, single, of uh, two together, uh, singles that I had of that for years. they all been so different. And I've just been blessed to be able to, to, to study different forms of music and to have players who are accomplished in, in, in many forms of music. Bill is probably the most consummate keyboards I've ever played with. Big has been produced by, and, uh, John, actually, John Roberts, uh, who's a great drummer, uh, produced that as well. So, I mean, when I do records like that, this is the difference between, like, say, uh, House of Sax, Going Home album. I did nothing on that album but play saxophone and write. Uh, John Roberts and Phil Davis produced all the R&B slash uh, house stuff. And Ricardo Monzon produced all the Latin stuff that I did on there. And all I did you know, was play saxophone, honestly, because my mother was dying at the time. And that's all that I could do. And that was that was the hard, that was the hardest record. Just going home has been the hardest record I've ever made because I say I had to, like I said, I had to pretty much watch her uh, take her last breath, and that was uh, that was rough. So playing the saxophone was uh, uh, how do you say therapy, uh, but I and writing was therapy, and writing got me through it. But I could the, the nuts and bolts of the album and all the rest of it was that was controlled by by uh, Phil Davis, John Roberts, and the cover of phone. Girls Groove Remix, you released. Uh, it's getting a lot of airplay. And um, it's an EDM piece where it's like electronic yeah. dance music. That was done by DJ DJ Kimmick from Atlanta, Georgia. They gave him the record. They did, we did Gail's Groove on the record, but the remix, uh, I asked him to do a remix, uh, Phil. And Phil said, no, I'm not the guy, but my partner is DJ uh, Kimmick. And they gave him the remix, and he, man, boy, I love that. Yeah. You can make a full dance album, like a real, like for the dance floor. That's because... what he wants. That's what DJ Kimmick wants to do. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. because it had that sound. Like, it's less, it's more Latin and less disco-y early like you're it, yes. it had a, a classic let's all chant vibe on the original yes. Yes. and they he stripped that yes. away and made it a more percussive and latin sounds really good yeah it was our plan to do actually EP, just a dance EP, and then you know my mother died and my father died and it just you know i mean you know we can't do everything at once but that's definitely I, i'm I'm hopeful that I get to that in 2021, but I doubt it. Probably 2020. What the goal is now is I need to probably check with you next year and see how you did. <laughs> like, this is your year in review, you know, like that thing where you get on Spotify, <laughs> what great. music you played. This is the, these are the hits that you had. Well, with your business, we'll see where you're at. <clears throat>
So the Brian Miller is a bass player, and uh, yeah, and <laughs> and he put you on. He has Stevie uh, Wonder doing a harmonica. Wow. Now what? Uh, I, what I like about um, Brian Miller is that the first time I heard it, I really thought it was a guitar. There's that that loose bass sound that sounds yeah. so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How cool would it have you ever worked with Stevie Wonder before? Obviously, you probably weren't in the same room. No, no. I mean, I, that's the, man. Look, this, this is exactly what happened with that piece. So, and I can't remember because I was just going through. And I, again, I'm sorry because I don't, you know, I have to say it, but. My father was either on his last his last couple of days where he had just died. And Byron called. He said, Walter, I got this track. He said, man, I need you on it. I said, no, Byron. I said, I, just, I don't have it in me. Pop is on his way or Pop is just, you know, if he got, I just can't do it. Um, he said, okay, man. So he hung up the phone. And I remember that thing. It was almost like God was talking. Something was going on. And, and someone said to me, Walt, Byron Miller and Stevie Wonder. Really want to pass this up? So I called him back the next so I said, "Give me a couple of days, uh, just to make 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 a range, whatever it was, and I'll be on. Just send me the track." He sent me the track. Evie was already on it, and it was just it, it was it was just perfect the way it was. And I said, "Byron, you sure you want me to do anything?" He said, "Walter, do you?" And when I got on it, I did see a couple of places where I said, "Okay, I can make this better. Oh, I can make this better." And I can make this better. And then let me just take the back seat and just listen to it. And, that, and that's exactly how the track played out. Uh, it's, it's the prettiest track I've ever played on in my life. It is pretty. It's, 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 it's weird because Stevie Wonder's The uh, Secret Life of Plants have, have has kind of uh, been, it's kind of been like villainized through the years because it's not, yes. you know, but now it's making a comeback in the last like maybe five, 10 years. Wow. People are, are talking about it. Uh, Quest Love. Wants to do a live presentation, like song by song, or wow. live, yeah. So people were coming back to that album, and his harmonica playing is very reminiscent of Secret Life That's of Plants. Right. Like this, That's right. this is kind of like a, a throwback to that time period, and you got Agreed. you got the bass in, and it's really a good song. I hope it does really well for Brian. Uh, okay, got one more, and I didn't know the um, the name pronunciation. It's Madi. Come on. M-A- oh, oh, my D. My D. My D. Okay, music to drive my by, D. no sax. Yep. This to me is my D. Is your uh-huh. is your probably your most commercial sounding song on that album? Um, yeah. If you would release that, say on Watercolors, I think it would get a lot of airplay. But what's going on with that? Because I want to finish the the interview with that. My D. My D is, is probably like a second father to me, um, and you know we. Uh, um, <laughs> I tell the story sometimes. Actually, I don't tell the story in public, but when, when I went to college, uh, my D was part of what they call the old D or, or the old crew that, you know, was there for us, and they were playing jazz extremely well. And we were the young kids coming up and said, no, we can play, we can play, no, 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 no. They wouldn't even let us in the room um, until, uh, they, they wouldn't even let us in the room because we were young, we were behind the ears, free, whatever that phrase is. And one day, and we just decided that one day, you know, we're going to force them to, to make it. Branford was part of this, our, our thing, too. Branford's my age. So me and Branford and Donald got together. You know, we're going to do our own session, and we're going to make them come to us. So we got our own sessions together, and we started playing there. And people started coming to albums and cheering up the old D scene with the album and started playing music, and that's how we hooked up. And my D was, the, was, was one of the most um, intelligent, sensitive, uh, kindness, and, and, and proficient musicians that I had ever met. And we started the friendship because he's like a big brother, like a father, and he's that to other people. And especially the guy named uh, Linwood Harper, who I thought, and he wrote a song in the, on behalf of him and called it like Wow, we're gonna play that. Uh, that's more. Okay. That's more information now than I thought. Uh, that's great. <laughs> uh, now I'm gonna look at this song completely different. <laughs> Um, I would love to catch up with you next year and see what kind of music you're doing. We'll m- turn this into a, be great. once of it, once a final year wrap up. <laughs> a that one- would be great. And you know what, man, I, I, I just want to 
say thank you so much for being patient with me and doing all that was going on in my life with you know with the with the morning and with trying to just establish the business and I've just been very very patient and you've been very very kind. I really really appreciate that, bro. And you got that. Anytime you need, just holler.